here is the next example in this example he's asking asking us to find um, ix by using mesh analysis as i mentioned you can do this by using nodal analysis too if i do it by using nodal analysis i might end up with only two equations because i already know this node voltage all i need to do apply kcl here apply kcl here take this as a reference node you will end up with two equations um mesh analysis since i can see three meshes probably i might end up with three loop equations or mesh equations at the same time one of the mesh equation is going to be easier because i see a current source at the outer branch so step one find all the loops and assign the loop currents i'm going to take that as i1 i2 and i3 okay i can see loop 3 i don't need to apply kvl because there is a current source at the outer branch that current source is a dependent current source what is it depending upon i mean as long as you see rhombus that's a dependent source as long as you see arrow inside it it's a current source and it is depending upon what this ix ix is nothing but a current it's a currently dependent current source so i can clearly take i3 equal to 3 ix okay at the same time even though my goal is finding ix whenever you're doing mesh analysis your goal will shift from finding the necessary quantity to finding loop currents so i can rewrite this ix i mean if you look at ix current ix is nothing but flowing in two ohm resistor and you're taking this as i1 in this loop and i2 in this loop so i can take that ix equal to i1 minus i2 okay so this is my second equation i'm going to substitute it here so i3 equal to three times i1 minus i2 this is one of the equations so first and second and this is third equation now loop one do we need to apply kvl yes loop one apply kvl so before applying kvl assign your positive and negative signs according to my current direction that is positive and negative positive and negative this is already given okay a current source or voltage source independent or dependent it's always given so according to my current direction minus 30 plus 6 times i1 minus i3 plus 2 times i1 minus i2 equal to 0 so 8 i1 minus 2 i2 minus 6 i3 equal to 30 this is my fourth equation okay again same thing loop 2 apply so if you look at loop 2 do we need to apply kvl yes because there is no current source in the outer branch so these two are the outer branches i don't see any current source there according to my current direction i'm going to assign positive and negative sign positive and negative positive and negative so here this value is three times i2 minus i3 so remember whenever i'm in loop 2 it's always i2 minus something whenever i'm in loop 1 it's always i1 minus something so that that makes to write our equations easy so that's the reason i always assume whenever i'm in loop 2 i always assume that loop current is higher than any other loop same thing with any other loop if i'm in loop 3 loop 3 current is higher than any other loops so since i'm in loop 2 i'm assuming i2 is larger than any other current so 3 i2 minus i3 plus 12 i2 plus 2 times i2 minus i1 equal to 0. okay so this value is minus 2 i1 plus 17 i2 minus 3 i3 equal to 0 this is my fifth equation so i have three unknowns three equations so if i write down again 3i1 minus 3i2 minus i3 equal to zero this is my third equation so if you look at these three one two and three three unknowns three equations 
solve for those and you can find ix. I'm not going to solve them here, but you can use substitution method or matrix format to solve this. Um, but I'll give you the answers. Okay, I changed my mind. Most probably I'm going to solve this here. Um, I'm, what I'm going to do, I'm going to multiply equation three with uh, three. So it's a three times three I one minus three I two minus I three equal to zero. Okay, so that value is nine I one minus nine I two minus three I three equal to zero. Now I have fifth equation as minus two I one plus 17 I two minus three I three equal to zero. So I'm going to subtract these two. So it's going to be 11 I one minus 17 min plus nine, which is 26 I two equal to zero. Now I was able to eliminate I three in this equation. Okay. Similarly, here I'm going to take equation five multiply with two. So equation five multiply with two. Equation five multiply with two. So here what I did equation two multiply with three. Actually, that's equation three. Okay, so equation five multiply with uh, two, so that's sixteen i one minus four i two. Sorry, that's not right. I'm looking at equation four. So when we look at equation five, minus four i one plus thirty four i two minus six i three equal to zero. So equation four, I have eight i one minus two i two minus six i three equal to thirty. This is equation four. Now to eliminate i three I'm going to subtract again minus twelve i one um, plus thirty six i two this these two are going to get cancelled out minus thirty. So if I rewrite again I'm in, I'm going to multiply the negative so twelve i one minus thirty six i two equal to 30 this is equation i already have five that could be six this could be seven so here is my seven now solve equation six and seven so six i have 11 i1 minus 26 i2 equal to zero equation seven i have 12 i1 minus 36 i2 equal to zero so to eliminate I1, I'm going to multiply 11 I1 minus 26 I2 equal to zero. I'm going to multiply this with 12. That's equation six. And 12 I1 minus 36 I2 equal to 30. I'm going to multiply this with 11. So one, 12 times 11, 132 I1 minus so 26 times 12, which is 312, I2 equal to 0. 11 times 12, 132, I1 minus 11 times 36, 396, I2 equal to 11 times 30, 330. Ooh. I, I mean, subtracted these two, eliminate I1. Eliminated I1, found I2 equal to minus 3.92, substituted that value in I. In the first equation, I found I1 equal to minus 9.285 amperes. Our goal is finding Ix. Ix is nothing but, I mean, if you look at that circuit, we have two ohms and I said that's Ix. We're assuming that is I1 and I2 is going up. So can I say Ix is nothing but I1 minus I2. Actually, that's what we defined at the first equation or second equation. So here I can say Ix equal to I1 minus I2. I found I1 equal to minus 9.2. 285 and i2 is minus minus 3.92 that value i x minus 3 point sorry 5.36 amperes that's the i x value okay so 
I mean, as mentioned, sometimes it might be easier to solve by using MASH. Sometimes it's easier to solve by using nodal analysis. Um, okay, I'll solve more examples in the next video. Thank you.